Hello everyone and thank you for joining me for another Horror Movie Month video. Uh, this is what I've been watching since the last video that I uploaded. I'm actually filming and uploading this on Halloween, which is my birthday, woohoo! Um, and it'll be what I've watched up until last night. So we were up to day 26. On day 26 we actually watched a film called The Collector. This is a film that is written and directed by the guy who wrote some of the Saw sequels, I believe Saw's four to seven. Now, as you'll know if you've been watching my previous videos, I'm actually a fan of Saw, so much so that I had a marathon of all seven Saw movies. And The Collector is a film that I was really interested in seeing because it essentially started life as a Saw prequel, apparently. But when the studio couldn't um, get it off the ground, they sold the rights and it morphed into its own um, own sort of standalone horror movie that has nothing to do with the Saw franchise other than sharing some of the same uh, writing staff. So um, this film has a, a bit of a peculiar history to it, but watching it you would not know um, that that was the case because I have to say that The Collector is one of the best horror movies that I've seen in a long time. There's a f quite a few reasons for me saying that. Um, the main one of which is that it's a really interesting idea for a horror movie. It essentially follows a character called Arkin who decides he's basically a handyman, you know, does odd jobs around the house for people. He decides that he's going to rob a wealthy um, employer of his. So one night when he thinks the family have gone on a vacation, he returns to the home to crack the safe that is hidden in the house, only to find that the family have been taken hostage, tortured and held captive basically in the house. So he gets there to find this, he finds um, very sort of crude makeshift traps in every room and um, it's basically been turned into a house of horrors so Arkin has to try and get back out of the house and while deciding whether or not he's going to help the family along the way. What makes it interesting is it's just that idea of somebody turning up to a house where a serial killer is already there. It's you know it's sort of a, a well-worn genre, the, the home invasion serial killer genre but it's quite a neat twist on it, seeing it through the eyes of a character that um, isn't supposed to be there. And I, I found that really quite interesting. And the performances across the board were great. Um, what I do like is as well, with the collector, the, the main villain, they resist the temptation to show his face. Um, all the way through the, the film he wears actually quite a very creepy mask, uh, the back of which you can see on the cover there. So they resist the temptation to show his face, and they also um, do something that I feel Saw kind of lost as the films went on. Essentially, in the Saw films, the traps became, you know, almost like you had to be a civil engineer in order to rig them. In The Collector, they are very crude and a lot more horrifying for it. So, I mean, even something as simple as fish hooks hanging from the ceiling or a carpet made out of bear traps, you know, they're, they're very crude, very simple and a, a lot more effective, I find. And um, the film itself, it's, it's very well paced. It's literally 85 minutes long, but it doesn't stop to breathe for a moment. It's edgy of your seat, uh, tension filled, and I, I absolutely loved every minute of it. I, I thought this film is genuinely fantastic. It's very well shot. I mean, it didn't have a massive budget, but it's very well shot. Um, it looks great on Blu-ray. And the tension that they managed to build is um, it, it is very, very well done. Um, plus the fact that they... A lot of films like this, you always get to the point where they enter the killer's lair and it's always some sort of massive... Um, maze of the place but in this it literally manages to keep it fairly realistic and, and down to earth and it's all set within this one house and um, so I, I found it to be a great film and I honestly can't recommend it enough The Collector I absolutely loved and um, this is a film that I'll be revisiting in next year's horror movie month and um, The Collector absolutely great loved it so that was day 26 day 27 we didn't actually watch horror movie because we had a Halloween slash birthday party um, here, so we didn't watch anything on day 27, but on day 28 we picked it up again and watched the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, this is a film that I won't spend too much time talking about this because you, you know all know about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but what I will say is this, it's a film I've seen 
a lot. I, I've seen this dozens of times and every time I find it just as effective and creepy. Now the violence in it, there isn't really any on-screen violence, a lot of it's um, implied and it leaves it up to the audience's imagination and I think that's why it has endured the, the test of time. Um, it hasn't dated in a way, it's, it's set in the 70s, but I mean you get horror movies coming out now that are set in the 70s, but technologically I wouldn't say it's really dated. You, it, 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 it's a film that could have been released today. Um, like I say, I think the fact that they try not to show on-screen violence um, helps it remain timeless because no doubt if you saw some of the effects it may date it. Um, but they, they managed to dodge that. It's a very visceral, grisly, horrible film uh, about a group of teenagers in Texas um, being chased by Leatherface and killed off one by one. A great film. I love this movie. Probably in my top ten horror movies. Uh, this is the three disc steelbook DVD, as you can see there. It's one that I haven't bothered upgrading onto Blu-ray because I don't really see the point. But um, like I say, an, an effective film gets me every time. I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So that was day twenty-eight. Day twenty-nine, we watched a film, um, another film that I haven't seen before, and that is Daybreakers, starring Ethan Hawke. This is a film that both Laura and I were very interested in seeing because it, it looked, from the trailers, um, like it's putting a new spin on the vampire genre and it's something that you know we thought looked quite interesting and it was um, in a, a sale in HMV, it's five DVDs for £30, £6 a DVD, um, five Blu-rays rather for £30, so it ends up £6 a Blu-ray, so I paid £6 for this, which believe it or not is actually cheaper than anywhere online because I was looking for this for quite a while and couldn't find it cheap so I thought, I get it as part of the deal. And it essentially uh, follows the plot of uh, the human race has become vampiric. Uh, a vampire bat started an outbreak which led to the entire human race becoming vampires and only a small number of human beings remaining. Now the blood supply, food supply for the vampires is running out and it's Ethan Hawke's scientist character who has to try and work out a synthetic replacement for blood, something that can sustain the population and um, while doing so he starts to look for a cure for vampirism, see if he can make people human again. It's a film that is peppered with really good interesting ideas, however it's not particularly well executed. Now. Some of the shots look amazing in this. It, it is well shot, but the um, the effects, they are over-reliant on CGI, unfortunately. Uh, the CGI in this does look a little bit dodgy. I'm not sure it had the budget to really pull off some of the sort of grander scope um, sh shots and ideas they were going for. Which is a shame, because when you see the practical effects that they use, um, essentially when vampires don't eat for a couple of weeks, they become uh, monstrous. And that's all practical effects, and it looks really good. You know, the suits and the makeup and everything, it looks fantastic. So, if only they could have applied that sensibility to the rest of the movie, and it probably would have looked a lot better, but that's a, a kind of minor quibble. Um, another sort of criticism I have of it, is it's a little over an hour and a half long and I don't think it's quite long enough to flesh out the characters and the ideas that are in this. As I say, that the ideas are more peppered throughout the film rather than fully fleshed out, which is a shame. It probably could have done with another 20 minutes um, on the second and third act to really flesh it out to make it a more well-rounded experience. Um, but the performances uh, are, are great. I mean, Ethan Hawke is, is great, but he's great in everything. And you've got Willem Dafoe as well. Um, playing a rebel human um, who essentially is is just being mental. It's Willem Dafoe just doing what Willem Dafoe does best and, and being really sort of menacing and a bit mental. Um, so I, I love Willem Dafoe in this. You've also got Sam Neill playing the main villain who is essentially the head of a, a corporation, um, a, a vampire of course. Another criticism I have of this though is that the, re the civilization, the population at large, don't really act any differently to humans other than drinking blood. And, you know, when you see vampires having board meetings and trying to work out what to do about synthetic blood, etc., it's, it's nothing that, you know, humans... There's no real difference between vampire behavior and human behavior um, until they start starving, which is one of the good ideas in this, but... I would have preferred um, a more distinguished sort of difference between vampires and humans. 
um, in the way they live. But again, that's something that you would need a longer running time to do. So I think it's an okay film. I think it's average. Um, and it was worth checking out. So Daybreakers, I'd, I'd recommend for fans of horror and sci-fi. You might find a couple of ideas in there that you like. Um, but don't go expecting anything brilliant. So that's Daybreakers. And then on day 30, last night, I watched um, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Um, this was on offer when we bought it. Now, this is a film that I tried to watch when it came out, I believe in 2005, um, and, and didn't actually get through because I wasn't really that interested in it, but I thought I'd give it another chance in light that it's directed by um, is it Scott Derrickson, who did Sinister, a film that I really enjoyed. You can see my review for that a bit earlier on. Um, the Exorcism of Emily Rose is actually a lot better than I remember it being. I, I did enjoy it. It essentially follows a plot of a trial taking place against a priest played by Tom Wilkinson who is accused of negligent homicide um, during an exorcism which resulted in the death of um, the possessed Emily Rose. And it sort of asks the question, was she possessed? Was it psychological? Was it medical? Um, and it's really interesting, but what I like about this is it takes sort of what the exorcist did, the actual exorcism itself and the effects on the, the priest and the people involved, but kind of widens the scope to show the, the effect on the community that it has um, through this trial. And it's a very kind of clever framing device. And I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it, seeing how this exorcism and this event, whether it was a demonic possession or a, a, a medical thing, it had a ripple effect within the community and within um, the law firms involved and it's quite interesting, it, it goes a little bit deeper um, than your average horror movie. Having said that, it's a very, very Hollywood version of an exorcism story. I mean, if you're going into this sort of territory, exorcism territory, you have to bring something new to the table because The Exorcist is the definitive exorcism movie, if not the definitive horror movie of all time because I was actually sat there thinking about The Exorcist wondering can I actually think of a film that's more effective or scary than The Exorcist? And I couldn't. You know, it's not to say it's my favourite horror movie of all time, but it's certainly one of the best, if not the best. So I, I don't feel like we bring enough different... I, I think the script is good and the ideas of it and the frame, uh, frame advice of the courtroom and everything is really clever, but the way it's shot and directed is a little bit sort of um, workmanlike. So from that perspective, I, um, I I didn't think it was bringing much new to the table, but it is a very interesting and enjoyable horror movie, and I would recommend it. Like I said, I just think if you're going to jump in the ring with The Exorcist, you have to bring something new that we haven't seen before, but that film doesn't really do it. It shows us stuff we've seen before, but does it particularly well. So I did enjoy it. Um, I then followed that up with a, a movie out of the Mo Universal Monsters box set. Watch the original Dracula starring Bela Lugosi from 1931 which, um, as sort of corny and camp as it is now, and it's very short, it's about an hour and 14 minutes, it is actually a very effective little horror movie um, in the sense of... It's a little curio, essentially. Like I found it interesting watching it, thinking this is what people found scary like 80 years ago. Um, there are actually still, it's beautifully shot, it looks amazing on Blu-ray, it's been fully restored, it, it looks amazing. It's beautifully shot, Bela Lugosi, it has a very distinct presence as Count Dracula. And I, I found it to be very interesting. Um, I will say this, it's, it's got some very sort of creepy shots in it. To this day, there are shots in that um, film that still um, are a little bit creepy. So it is still effective in that sense. Um, and I did really enjoy it. I, I think for those movies, to really get the most out of them, you have to understand the context in which they were made and the time at which they were released. Um, but it was very interesting, very rewar rewarding watch. I'd say anybody who has the opportunity to see the original monster movies, especially Dracula, do, because they are great, and it shows you where today's horror movies came from. So any fans of horror out there, check them out. You know, it's horror heritage. Um, it's important. So uh, Dracula was, was great. Um, essentially what's going to be coming up now, uh, you will see a video rounding off Horror Movie Month. I'm going to be watching some more movies today, uh, culminating in a very special movie tonight. Uh, there will be a video coming up for that, um, as well as uh, what I got for my birthday and a DVD and Blu-ray updates, bits and pieces like that. So thank you as always to everybody who rates, comments and subscribes. I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.